The next thing I want to talk about is our posture and how that has implications for how we're able to breathe. I guess the first thing I'll mention is because so many of us have to work at desks and are spending so much of our time sitting, driving, washing dishes, texting, phone, we're pulled forward the majority of our life. Rarely do we reach up and pick apples off of a tree or climb unless we're climbers. So it's hard for our bodies to stay in balance in terms of flexibility and mobility. And we tend to start to get a little bit more like this. This is a common posture in our society. Go ahead and just play with this and bring your own body here and feel how that affects your breath. Right away, I don't have access to mobility in my side ribs completely and in these ribs at all. They're sort of collapsed down and I can't really breathe in them very well. Breathe a little bit into my back, but I have to say, it's kind of hard to exhale fully in this position. So it forces me into a more shallow breath so that when I'm breathing, I'm having to use these accessory muscles more these muscles in my neck and my upper rib cage that help to lift my ribs, um, they have to overwork. Our diaphragm should be our primary muscle and for it to function, it needs to be in a mechanically optimal position to function. When it's not, we use other things and when we use these muscles here, it causes us to be tight in our necks and tight in our upper traps, tight in our pecs. And we can go get a massage and they're like, oh man, you are so tight in your neck. And you're like, I know, I know, I stretch. I try to let go, try not to be stressed. But if we're breathing like this, our muscles will be perpetually tight. When we can use our diaphragm, we don't have to use these accessory muscles all the time and they can relax and not be so tense. So this is one posture. The other posture, that I used to have a lot more of looks more like this. And, um, and I, was a, I was a gymnast and I was a cheerleader and um, there was a lot of time spent like this and like this. And so it kind of goes with that sort of lifting up of our chest. I think a lot of us, we sort of think of that military posture too, to be up in our chest. And we're told stand up straight. And we're told to stand up straight. A lot of us interpret that to mean this where we take our rib cage and we pop it up like this. So our diaphragm, remember, is all the way through and it's here. And we want these ribs to be positioned kind of more parallel to the ground, your diaphragm anyway, right like this. When I pop my ribs into this position, which for so much of my life I thought was proper and upright, it takes my diaphragm and it makes it mechanically more challenged to work. Feel it yourself. Bring yourself into an extended position and take a deep breath. You will find that your breath can only really go in here, and you do still use your diaphragm, but you have to use these accessory muscles also to breathe. Now, if you could take these ribs and bring them parallel, now take a deep breath, and you'll feel that you have access to your side ribs and your back a little bit too, and that you can get a fuller breath and more oxygen. I can't tell you how many runners I work with that are running here, and they're forced to breathe shallowly. They're not getting as much oxygen to their muscles. As soon as I can get them to drop their rib cage into a neutral position, fully exhale so they can be at the bottom of their breath, and breathe here, all of a sudden, it's easier to run, their endurance is better, their muscles are getting more oxygen, it's, it's a huge difference. So why people tend toward this kind of shallow breathing and this sort of position, I think goes back to the fact that we sit like this in our life. So we sit like this, we do our work. When it comes time to stand up, nobody wants to stand up and walk around and be here but when we sit like this all the time, the muscles from our, our collarbone, our clavicle, to our ribs, from our neck to our shoulders, get short. And so we have two choices. We stand up, we can stay here, and that keeps our diaphragm and rib cage in a good position. Or we can say, I don't wanna be slouched and slumped. I'm gonna come up like this. So those, those short muscles force our rib cage to either be here where it's harder to use our diaphragm, but yet we can look people in the eye, or those short muscles force us to be here where we can access our diaphragm, but we can't really look at people very easily. So most of us choose this. 
And so therefore we're walking around with more of a shallow breath because we're unable to have our diaphragm in a neutral position so that it can be the primary muscle of respiration. All of our neck muscles can let go. In my previous video, when I talked about breath, I talked a lot about the sympathetic nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system and, and stress and how stress is a big issue in our society, right? And so this tendency to have short muscles here from being here, being here, therefore having to choose to do this compromises our diaphragm, but also has that shallow breathing that puts us more in a sympathetic state that's more fight or flight, that's more anxious, that doesn't produce healing hormones. It produces more stress hormones. It produces more cortisol, norepinephrine, epinephrine, which is adrenaline. Constantly, it's like a slow drip in our system that contributes to our stress. So that's why these exercises are so important because they start to change the relationship of the, our muscles and give us length where we need to be longer and allow the resting position of our rib cage, our bones to be proper so that we can breathe more fully. A quick exercise you can do to start to improve the length from here to here so that you don't have to make a choice. You can actually keep your diaphragm right here and come up and not have to um, choose between being able to breathe well or look straight ahead. You can actually have both. So real easy. You can just reach one hand behind your back and then shift your weight and reach your other hand behind your back, clasp your hands together, and first pull your shoulders back as far as you can. And for some of you, that will be a stretch. And so when you do that, pull them back and then actually exhale your ribs all the way down. And if you want to use that hard S, that S to bring those ribs down, S, do it because it's really effective at helping you get a full exhale. Then the second thing you want to do, if you can, if it's not too much, you can start to straighten your elbows, but not at the expense of popping your ribs or not at the expense of pulling your shoulders forward. So again, the first thing is you can weight transfer onto one side of your hip if you're sitting, reach back behind you, then weight transfer to your other hip or foot if you're standing, reach behind you. Let your elbows be bent first and just pull those shoulders back while simultaneously exhaling your ribs down all the way. That improves the length from here to here. All these muscles can, again, get really short from being sitting slouched like we all do, right? <clears throat> okay, so once you get this back, this down, start to straighten your elbows without losing this or losing that. And then what you can do next is take a breath. We actually breathe into these upper ribs. That helps you reclaim some of the depth and volume in the front of your chest that we lose when we're like this. When we're like this for so many hours, we end up just kind of walking around and being like this. When we can actually open that back up, open that back up, pull those shoulders back, bring these ribs down and breathe into these upper ribs, we can start to reclaim that depth. Our head can come back and be in a better position. And then icing on the cake is to kind of straighten these elbows so that we can get a greater stretch of the fascia all the way up to our neck, all the way through the front of our ribs. So that's a really quick thing you can do, staying in line at your desk anywhere that can start helping to improve your postural balance and um, give you better access to having your diaphragm be where it needs to be. So. I've got other videos that will help you continue to mold your body back into a neutral position out of a accommodated postural position where it gets from what we do all the time. And one of the first ones I would direct you to is one called a 9090 and it's on my website. And that's a great one to help start getting our ribs down and getting more opened up. Thank you.